Joel writes in that he had heard the past week that Jay Leno filed for conservatorship from his wife, Mavis. So Joel is saying, so what exactly is conservatorship? And should Joel look into it? And how does it compare to an estate plan or a will? This is a really good question, timely, especially with uh, my buddy Jay Leno, who had to do this with Mavis. Go ahead. Yes, Joel, I sadly saw that news too. And they had been married quite a long time. And my understanding, again, I don't know them personally, uh, like Bob may have intimate knowledge, but um, I think she has memory issues and maybe suffering mm -hmm. uh, in that regard. And so the conservatorship, I would very much say is like a guardianship. I think conservatorship probably if you are a people.com watcher got a bad rap when you think of the whole Britney Spears and and her dad, you know, getting conservatorship. But um, typically, at least here locally, we think of it as more of like a guardianship, whether it be somebody that has lost um you know, their memory, they're incapacitated for other reasons, mm -hmm. or certainly if they are deemed, you know, mentally or physically disabled and incapable of making decisions for themselves, whether that be due to their health decisions or incapable of making financial decisions, then a court would hear their case um, and decide whether or not this person who would like to be nominated for uh, to be conservative or guardian uh, over their loved one uh, will be approved by the judge or if they need to get a guardian ad litem, some you know, a disinterested third party to make those determinations or even to serve on their behalf. Um, so, you know, are there ways to prevent that? I think there is a place and a need for conservatorship and guardianship. And I would look, you would want to look to state law for those distinctions and, mm -hmm. and speak to a professional if that is something that you may be interested in. But just estate planning in general, other things that you can at least try to mitigate in advance of something rising to that level is a good general power of attorney. So oftentimes we'll worry about like what's going to happen when we die. Let's have a will in place. And while that is very important, and of course, trust can be an important vehicle for certain types of asset preservation and whatnot. Durable power of attorneys are when we're still alive, but we need someone else to step in and make decisions for us. Whether it's a convenience issue, they can be effective immediately, or they can be drawn up in a manner in which they're springing and they're not effective. That person doesn't have the right to step in until we're incapacitated mentally or otherwise. Let's say we're in the hospital in a coma or we are in a memory care unit. And so oftentimes these general powers of, uh, of attorney are very um inexpensive to get done in advance. You do have to have capacity when you execute it, you know, nominating that other person. So you want, again, to do it in advance. It's a planning tool. But then once you need it, all you have to do is present that it's going to be broad and sweeping powers, financial, healthcare, you know, selling and buying real property. If properly drafted, all those areas will be touched. And that's important. You mentioned you have to be have the capacity to sign so don't wait till the, your loved ones don't have that capacity because then it's too late. And that's Absolutely. The and the yeah. POA, of course, terminates at death, but it can be a useful tool um, until that time whenever those types of issues arise. But certainly the next step up, you know, depending on that situation could mm -hmm. be guardianship court. So we, we want to look to state law and that fact pattern to determine if they would be good candidates for that. A reminder, if you want to sign up for our newest newsletter, this week's topic is when should you consider a new home? Go to we love Louisville.com. That's we love Louisville.com.